Greetings fellow descendants, my name is Lars and today I want to talk about farming void shards. In the last video we talked about how to do outpost uh, infiltration missions and farm your amorphous materials. The next step in the process is to farm your void shards in order to utilize the uh, abyssal void fusion reactors so you can unlock your amorphous materials. There's a lot of different missions you can do for void fragments. There are non-attribute void fragments that only give you about three of each type for doing it. We will not talk about those because they're not really worth doing at the moment. If they ever get around to adjusting those, we can revisit that. But for now, don't even touch those. Uh, then we've got various types like lightning uh, or the electric ones here or fire ones here. Um, and they're spread all over the different maps, and there's a lot of different ones that you can do, and each of them gives you a different number of void fragments of certain types. There are four types of void fragments. There's the organic void shards, the inorganic void shards, the monomers, and the polymers. So... I am going to go through the fastest farming methods for each type of shard so that everyone watching can quickly build up enough shards so they can crack open all of their amorphous materials because this is a long part of the grind and I want everyone to be able to get the, what they need quickly enough. So to start out with, we're going to go over the organic void shards, which is going to require a fire type descendant. So for that, I'm going to be using Blair. If you have Lepic or Esimo, you can use them as well. But Blair is the one I will be using for this demonstration. If you do not have Lepic, Esimo, or Blair, you can unlock Blair by going and doing the uh, dungeon missions in White Knight Sculch and Hagios. Each of the pieces comes from one of those four or dungeons, and you can acquire them and then make Blair outright. You don't need to you don't need to go through the process of crafting each of these three pieces. You just need to find them as drops from those dungeons. So once you have Lepic or Blair or any other fire types, we are going to go to Hagios at the Dune base down here. So when you come across one of these, they are going to be attributed to the element. And you're going to need to hit it with an elemental attack in order to start the mission for it. So in order to do this mission, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead. Oh, before we get to that, let me go ahead and show the build that I am utilizing for Blair. So I have um, Dimension Specialist and Fire Specialist to boost the damage of his abilities. They're both fire and dimension oriented abilities. Um, I also have skill expansion so that the effect range of his fire puddles is larger. And I have emergency measures for additional skill crit rate and skill crit damage. Uh, and then everything else is just uh, HP and defense. Uh, if you do not have enough room for all of this, which you probably don't because I've, I've used a couple of uh, resets on him, just focus on fire specialist and get some skill expansion so that's a little bit easier and then Dimension Specialist for the added power. Um, Blair has some built-in crit bonuses himself, and his base crit is decent, so you don't necessarily need the boosted crit here. It's just nice. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, do, do the mission real quick. So, there we go. So to start off, all I do is I lay down my fire puddle. I'm going to go over here to where the monster spawns. Drop another one. Go all the way across and hit it with one more fire puddle. All the enemies here are going to burn away quickly, except for that guy. And then I can burn this next. If that one had gone in the fire just like everything else, then we wouldn't have needed to worry about that. I'm going to lay another fire puddle down by utilizing the ultimate and jump over here and lay one more down. Shoot to the remaining enemies. And we are done. So, that mission only took 39 seconds. Uh, I can get it closer to 30 seconds. If you have Lepic, though, you can stand um, up here. I've seen someone do it. They stood up here with their ultimate, and they just blast, blast, 
blast, blast, blast, blast with their ultimate all across the four, the three spots, and they cleared it pretty dang quickly. So if you have Lepic and you're built for that, you can do that. I do not have a way to showcase that because I do not have either Lepic or Ultimate Lepic, but I've seen it done. It does work. Um, but Blair is perfectly suitable to do this quickly. 39 second runs, 30 to 39 second runs is pretty fast. And uh, the reason why this one is so good for organic Void Shards is because the enemy spawners are so close, they are very stable, and you can get it all done very, very quickly and easily. So with that one done, let's move on to the inorganic Void Shards. So in order to do um, the inorganic Shards, you're going to need Freyna because they're all toxin based. If you do not have Freyna, as as I showed before, you can go to Access Info, Descendants, Freyna, and you can look at all of where you can get her pieces. Her code comes from the Sterile Land Normal Void Fusion Reactor uh, in Rockfall. They will give you that piece via a quest. The Amorphous Freyna material will be given to you via a quest, and you can go ahead and take that to... Um, there and unlock her. The other three pieces come from the Vesper's Normal Shelter Dungeon, the Vesper's Normal Ruins Path Battlefield Mission, and the Vesper's Normal Ruin Underground Entrance. So you can go and do, uh, that's also a battlefield mission, you can go and do these missions until you get these as drops, and you can craft Freyna and you will be able to do the Inorganic Void Shard farm. So for Inorganic Void Shard, there are two places to go. Let me go ahead and look up these real quick. Here is my Freyna build. Uh, my Freyna build is very weak. I, again, just went for some skill effect range, uh, tech mo power modifier, and toxic skill power modifier. There are better ways to build Freyna. Everyone watching, uh, most people watching might have better Freyna builds are ready to go. There's definitely better ones. I have not really touched Freyna outside of farming these uh, these missions and leveling her up for the mastery. So currently I do not have an optimal Freyna setup. Instead, I am utilizing primarily my Thunder Cage. Thunder Cage has the unique ability, overcharge. When defeating an enemy, the defeated enemy has a set chance to start discharge electric shockwave, which deals additional damage to nearby enemies. Pretty much means when you shoot an enemy and you kill it, it blows up electric electricity and hits any nearby enemies. I have uh, set this weapon up to be quite powerful. We've got weak point enhancement, firearm attack enhancement, uh, weak point enhancement, fire attack, firearm attack enhancement, more firearm attack enhancement, firearm crit damage, firearm crit rate, uh, max general rounds, rounds per magazine, and fire rate. And these two are just some more bonus crit damage and rounds. So I can optimize this more still, but for now, this is how it is set up, and it allows me to clear out enemies very quickly. So since my frame is not necessarily strong, my gun is stronger, so we can go ahead and do that. So with regards to Freyna, there are two places where we're gonna where we're gonna farm. The Echo Swamp has in the abandoned zone has one that is really good to farm. The best place to farm with Freyna is in the abandoned zone, in the Echo Swamp. It's down here in the bottom left corner this whole big area, and uh, it's this mission right here. You just go ahead and activate it. Enemies are going to spawn from this doorway here. They're going to spawn on this platform here and on that doorway over there. They're only going to spawn from these three zones so that you always know exactly where the enemies are going to be coming from. Like I said, my Freyna is very poorly built, so I am just going to shoot to these enemies down right quick. Oops, and not mess it up. And yeah, that's, <laughs> that's me making a mistake. But when you've got yourself set up okay, you can just utilize her abilities too. Uh, so you can make this go by even faster. Right now, I'm just uh, not really well set up for that.
Okay, maybe I'm better set up for that than I thought. Eh, they're going down pretty quick. All in all, this run takes a little closer to two minutes, but if you're bo if you're better built, then you're a little more focused than I was on this one. Um, it shouldn't take too long. Yeah, it was a minute 45. I've gotten it closer to a minute before. Um, you should ideally be doing these... Wow, lag. Um, you should ideally be doing these when you are in public lobbies so that any other people in the area can assist you. Or if you've got friends to group with and go do that. Um, right now all mine are sleeping. <laughs> but uh, you can go ahead and gather people and get these done even faster. You know, more people faster. Um, if you have more people at the ready, there is another option. You can go to White Knight Gulch. And you can do the, uh, the one on the mountaintops here. Which we'll do real quick. The clear times on these solo are relatively close to each other. This one has further away spawn points, but is a little bit faster for mob spawning. They're just further away from each other, so it's harder to manage as a, as a single person. But if your Freyna build is um, strong enough, and you can burn away enemies with like your puddles and stuff, you can lay down your puddles in one spot and go over and clear the other one with your weapon and just uh, sort of manage it that way. So, it's right up here. Let's go ahead and hit that. Enemies are going to spawn right over there and down here. Eh, it's working okay. If you have duration increase mods for your poison, then those areas will probably stay poisoned for a lot longer. The thing about this one is also, it does spawn a few more enemies overall. But if you, I like I said, if you're really good at managing it with Prana, which I'm not really practiced with on it, you can uh, get these done relatively easily. Yeah, I still think that the previous one is faster. But we'll see here. One minute fifty-two. Okay. Um, but likely if you did this one with another person and you could both manage each side, or if you're like I said, if your brain build is a little stronger than mine, you can manage it with your AoEs a little bit better. Um, this one is uh, also a good option. You just need to be able to clear out these enemies a little bit faster and you're good to go. So take your pick. Either one is good. They're both good options. I personally prefer the first one. The enemies are closer together. You don't have to do as much running around and moving. You can kind of just sit on one side of it and hit the, uh, just shoot the enemies, lay down your poison and stuff and shoot the monolith when it comes back up. And it's a lot easier to manage. But if you prefer this option and playing with your, playing with your friends and managing both these uh, spots, uh, better you can do that too um, let's see what is next need to go ahead next up we are going to go after our monomer void shards which means we're going to need an electric descendant which means everyone get out your bunnies So, um, Bunny is the go-to for the Electric Descendants. If you have Sharon and would prefer to use Sharon, that's okay too. Sharon does not really have any good abilities to use for this, but you can still 
um, hit the monolith with Sharon's first ability. Uh, if you have not unlocked Bunny yet, Bunny is offered to you via a quest early on in the game, uh, around like level 10 or something. You have to do missions in early zones to get her, uh, but the whole quest walks you through getting her, and they really push you towards it. So if you haven't unlocked Bunny yet, which I assume everyone has, uh, you're good to go. If you haven't, though, Axis Info, Descendant, and Bunny, and it's all right here. Kingston Normal Volgus Field Generator Mission for her Enhanced Cells. Kingston Normal Magister, Magister Lab Dungeon for her Stabilizer. Kingston Normal Volgus Data Transmitter Battlefield Mission for her Catalyst. And Intercept Battle Gravewalker Amorphous Material Pattern Bunny, which is acquired from the Kingston Normal Slumber Valley Dungeon in Kingston. Yeah. Do that, unlock Bunny, and you are good to go for this next one, the Bunny build I am utilizing. Yet again, just really basic electric specialist, skill expansion, and some HP and defense. You don't need much with just this alone, and, and I'm just gonna throw this on. There we go. I just, I don't have uh, reactors really well suited for the, some of these characters yet, so we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna go to the fortress in the Fallen Arc Zone. As long as you have an appropriate reactor, which will boost your skill power, and you have a little bit of a boost from the, the type specialist for a fire, lightning, ice, whatever it is, your character should be well suited to be able to do these fairly easily. Or if, or if you don't have any of that, if your guns are well built, you should be fine too. I've had no issues. Uh, if my character is a little weaker, as long as my gun is strong, and also, if my gun isn't very strong, if my character is stronger, then that's fine, too. So, we're just going to kind of go through here and to the right into the bunny cave. If you've never been in here before, this is a prime spot for uh, people to level their characters if they're playing bunny. The monolith is right here, and the enemies will spawn on either this platform or down here in the entrance to the cave. So, you're just going to pretty much run between these two spots. Pulsating your damage and wiping them out. If you have the bunny double jump uh, enhanced transcendent mod, I think you need that. Or if not, you can just double jump around while you've got stuff going. And they'll just... Yeah, I don't think you even need the mod. You just do this. Yeah, so you can just do that. Pop this, double jump around, enemies will just kind of die. And it's that easy. Like, I can, I could do a little bit more to make this go by a little faster since my bunny isn't as strong. But there's plenty of people with ultimate bunnies and regular bunny. I'll just set up out the wazoo. And you should all be able to do this fairly easily. Yeah, I'm just not gonna bother with that guy. And that's it. And that was with me goofing around. We did it in like minute 15, and I was goofing around the whole time. So you can definitely do this a lot faster. The this area is so compact, it's so easy. This is the best farming for Monom or Void shards uh, that you can get. Because just take a look. You get 17 Monom or Void shards for this. And it just clears out so fast. You just pop this and then run between the, the platform and this area down here. Again, if you're really well set up, you could pretty much just stand here double jumping. Like, I've seen videos of people doing it. They just stand in here double jumping around. That's how they get this done. That's how they pretty much AFK farm it. Whatever you need to do. This is the best place to farm Monomore Void Shards. Go for it. So now we come to the last one. This is where things get a little tricky. So, if you have Viesa. Viesa is the only chill descendant in the entire game. The only one attributed with the chill elemental type. Currently. No other characters besides Viesa and Ultimate Viesa have this elemental type. If you did not start the game with Viesa, or you have not already grinded out ultimate Viesa. This, she is the best one to go after this final um, polymer void shard type, but you don't need her. So I'm going to show you how to do it with Viesa, 
And then I'm going to give you the alternative in case you have not unlocked her yet so that you can still farm your void shards because she will take a lot longer to farm out either version than it took to get Blair, Freyna, or Bunny. So we're going to go ahead and head over here to the left to the Frozen Valley Tactical Transporter. So in the Frozen Valley zone, there is a Viesa Cold Void Fragment mission we can do. And this will probably be your best place to go to farm Polymer Void Shards. See, once you spawn in here on this teleporter, you just go down the hill, and there it is. The enemies are going to spawn around this hill, and they're going to be very easy to take down. Before we do that, though, let me just go over the build real quick. Switch out to... Uh... Sure, I'll just switch out to my uh, non-attribute one. It's just going to boost it a little bit. I don't have a nice one at the ready for this. So I'm just rocking chill specialist, some tech specialist, and some bonus crit rate and crit damage with some HP. Um, that's just it. You can probably do uh, skill expansion or duration for your ultimate so it's bigger and lasts longer. Uh, if you're running the cold snap wave for your cold snap ability to make it a like an AOE um, dot thing, you can add in more duration for that and, and area. But for now, this is basically what I'm using and it's pretty easy. Again, I'm using the gun more so than anything, but you can also use the abilities to make it go by faster. And all you do, start it up. And the enemies are just gonna spawn up here on this ledge here, nothing crazy. Those are patrols, those aren't part of it. And they're all mostly just these dudes, they're gonna just run at you for the most part. Along with the little guys with the guns, there's nothing crazy. The enemy types are really simple for these. Bombers and whatnot too, you just roll down the hill, blast it, and you're back to farm. If you need a lot of the void shard, if you need a lot of polymer void shards, this is the place to go. In addition, when you're playing Viesa and you're just popping things, you have the your passive is having the little orb shooting people too, so it makes it go by faster. And I don't need to kill those. And that's it. So this one's super easy, simple, but you know, about a minute long to do it. You can probably do it faster if you are better set up or have more people for sure. And the thing about this is I know not everybody has Viesa. Not everybody started with Viesa. Not everyone has unlocked Viesa. Don't worry. There is another opportunity for you to get Polymer Void Shards without needing to have Viesa or farm for her. So we're going to go ahead and go to the Vesper's Lost Supply Depot zone. And we're going to whip Blair back out because you are going to need a fire character for this. So if you have Lepic or SMO or Blair, uh, you can go ahead and use any of those. And there he is. And you're going to just go up here to this teleporter because it's right next to the monolith. And so this one is a little bit worse. The spawn zones for the enemies are further apart. You have to walk around a little bit more to go after everything. They're pretty much split in between this area. So it's not as efficient to grind this one, but it's going to be more efficient for you to grind this than it is to force you to go and unlock an entirely new character that you have to farm every single piece for across many different um, missions where you only have a chance at getting them and you have to get the whole thing done just to then be able to grind for possibly the shards you even need to grind in the initial uh, character in the first place. So this is pretty straightforward. You just come here and you take these guys down and you'll be good to go. Once you clear that side, you're going to just come across here and there will be more enemies spawning on this side. If you have the big radius set up, then this whole area becomes irradiated with fire. And it becomes quite easy to dispatch a lot of the enemies. 
and we're done. So. One minute 19. It's only a little bit slower um, than the Viesa one. But <clears throat> if you do not have Viesa, this is your alternative for the Polymer Void Shards. Basically, these spots for farming Void Shards are going to be your best bet to acquiring enough to be able to go and do all of your Abyssal Reactor farming. Because, look, you need 38 for your primary and like 7 to 10 or so for your secondary. Like, you're going to need like mid third, mid to late 30s and then like single digit to like low double digits for each of these in order to crack open your amorphous materials to farm what you need. And you're going to be on this grind. They, they made the outpost a lot easier to do. One minute cooldowns on them. So you're acquiring more and more amorphous materials at a faster rate. So you need more and more void shards to be able to farm them and open up all the things you want to do to get all your pieces. So I wanted to go ahead and share the these spots with you because um, I know that there's a lot of different places where you can get void shards and some of them are a lot longer. They're uh, riddled with bad spawn locations, uh, bad spawn rates for enemies. Sometimes they spawn really slow. They're being slowly pushed out through some kind of door and you have to wait and wait and wait. Um, or they're just the spawners are like on the opposite sides of a large canyon and you have to wait for them all to rush towards you as you just go back and forth, turning around, trying to blast them as best you can. And it's just those missions take a lot longer. These are the fastest. These have the most condensed mobs with the most stable spawners that I found. Um, and they're just the best options. So I really hope that you found this information helpful. Uh, as always, if you have any questions regarding the game uh, or, the, or this video or anything that we've discussed, please put them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more um, First Descendant content from me, go ahead and like and subscribe. Let me know. Uh, tell me that uh, you are enjoying the video and that... Uh, I should keep doing this and uh, yeah so this week i'm gonna go ahead and do a video for the new character luna when she releases she's releasing on the 31st so i'll do a first look video for her when she comes out just to go over kind of what her kit is uh, how she functions what kind of um scaling she's got with her stuff what's the best mods to try to use with her uh, at least at first and then we will tinker with her more as time goes on as well as I'm going to be doing some build guides for a couple of characters. The first one on my list is Jaber, the turret specialist. Um, if you have any other uh, characters you'd like to see guides for, I will be working with as many of the characters that I've got, trying to figure out some functional builds for them and how they work. So be on the lookout for those. And uh, yeah, that's uh, kind of what we got going in the pipeline right now. So just uh, so stay tuned. And uh, we'll get to those when I have them ready. But uh, thanks. But as, as I said earlier, thanks for watching. And uh, I will uh, see you guys in the next one. Peace.